All great main characters play like this. And when thinking about creating the main character for this game, we had to ask ourselves why these characters stood out. What about them is so similar and why does it matter so much? I feel like in most cases, a good game is going to try to make you feel great at playing it. Look at all the speedrunners out there still playing games like Mario 64 or Celeste. Those games make you feel amazing while playing it and people love to watch it. So today we're going to figure out what makes these games so fun to play and how can we add it to our game. So what makes a good character stand out? I think we can all agree that a game like Mario 64 or Celeste, like I mentioned, prioritize really snappy and good feeling movement. Whether it's Mario's triple jump or Celeste's precise movement, there's just a thousand aspects that make a character feel good. So I think forgiving the player for minor mistakes can go a long way. Those acts of forgiveness are going to make the player feel so much better at playing the game and therefore achieve our goal in overall enjoyment. So on the flip side of that, when I think of games that maybe didn't offer that buffer of leeway or forgiveness, the first game that comes to mind is Crash Bandicoot. I actually really liked Crash Bandicoot and have a lot of fond memories. What I don't have a lot of fond memories of is those levels where you're running towards the camera, where the rock is chasing you with a jump over pits and dodge boxes, and you can't see those things coming towards you. That does not feel good. At least for me, I do not have fond memories of that. But hey, that's just me. But why didn't that feel good? I think it goes back to making the player feel good while playing it. In that level specifically, I didn't have time to prepare for the obstacles coming towards me. So when I fell down those pits or got hit by those boxes, it felt unfair. And that doesn't feel good in that specific scenario. Obviously, if it's a horror game or something like that, being unprepared is kind of the whole point of the game. So what can we learn from this and make sure we add to our game and the way our player feels? I think for this game, we're going to try to forgive the player and prepare the player. I could totally be wrong about all of this, so don't take it as gospel truth, but this is what we're going to try to do for this game. So where did our character start? Actually, who is our main character? Our main character is Marcus. He's a little dude trying to get to his friend who is across the creek and through the woods. The story is roughly based off of my childhood trying to get to my friend's house, but we're keeping it simple. As I mentioned in the previous video, we're just looking to make a really solid platformer. So we started with player movement and tried to kind of just replicate Super Mario World in its feel and play. We really want the basics to feel good, so we just started with a platform with some smaller platforms to jump around on. Making player movement in a jam setting where there's extra pressures involved can be really difficult. I know in those settings I tend to cut corners and the end result can appear to be a little rough around the edges. We really want to try to avoid that in this scenario. And because this prototype was made in that jam setting, I feel like there are quite a few rough edges to this player movement so far. From animation hiccups to sort of like a double jump that I actually kind of like. There's just some areas that obviously need some improvement. So when we think about what we have so far and what we want to do, we really have to think about whether it makes sense to build off of that foundation. If we're not going to build off that foundation, what do we want to do? Do we want to build something from scratch or maybe look to others to help us build something out? I think to help us answer that question and move forward, I think we need to ask ourselves, what do we want our player to have and does our player have those things and how long would it take for us to make those things from scratch and learn how to make those? So let's ask ourselves that question. What needs to be fixed and what do we want to add? First things first, animations need cleaned up. At the moment, there's no fall animation and the jump animation needs perfected. The player also is going to have a flashlight and there's definitely some issues there that are going to need to be resolved. As well as when the player uses his walkie talkie. At the moment, you can just spam the button and it'll heal you fully. We want there to be a smart restriction there where the player can't just spam the button to heal. They need to go in through the animation, pull out their walkie and use it like you would normally. There's also no player knockback, which is a problem. At the moment, there's really no way of knowing when you've been hit other than the area getting darker. You really want it to feel like a game like Hollow Knight where you get hit, you know it. There is a clear, distinct moment of impact when you interact with the enemy. And that's just missing from the game at the moment. Another thing that's missing from the game that I kind of talked about earlier about the player forgiveness type thing is a thing called Coyote Time. 
This is not needed in the slightest, but it makes playing the game feel so much better. If you're unfamiliar with Coyote Time, it's basically a reference to Wiley Coyote, where he runs off the edge and is still running. It's pretty much forgiveness to a late jump. TuroDev has an amazing video going way deeper than I am into everything that I've kind of talked about already, about Coyote Time and just making a player feel good at playing. That's basically what I'm trying to do here. As far as player movement and things that need to be fixed and things that we want to just add, those are my top priorities. So I could go back to the drawing board and figure all those things out and learn how to do them, but that could take a very long time. I think for this game at least, we're going to be using some assistance from the internet. I know I mentioned TuroDev has an amazing platformer controller. Another person who has an awesome controller is Thomas Brush. I actually really like using these kits because it helps me learn so much. Seeing the end result and how everything fits and works together helps my brain understand the fundamentals of what needs to happen in order to replicate that. So in the future when I go to make something like this again, I have a baseline of knowledge to pull from. Making something this complex can easily get overwhelming. So how Having something like this is just so helpful. And this is just the movement. There are so many other things we want to add. Those things include an attack function with your flashlight, a healing ability with your walkie talkie, and possibly even talking to your friend through it. The player object is so complex, that's not even accounting for interactions within the world. I know we talked about player knockback from enemies, but we'd also love to add a collectible feature to add to that replayability. I'm getting ahead of myself, but this all has to do with the player interacting with the actual player with the controller and also the world. Getting that all to work together is extremely difficult, but we're gonna do our best. As someone plays your game, they're gonna get better at it, and your game should grow with them. Going back to the speedrunners and Celeste and Mario 64, the complexity of those characters makes those games last forever. To wrap this all up, our player is gonna have two things, forgiveness and preparedness. I cannot overstate the importance of player testing. Listening to player feedback and just watching them play is so valuable. Ask them questions in how it could be better. You will not regret it, and it's gonna give you a thick skin for the future when people you don't wanna hear from are going to tell you how they feel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it was actually a lot of fun to make. I'm not used to making devlogs like this, so it's been really fun. If you haven't watched the other devlogs for this game we're making, go check them out. You might enjoy them as well. And if you have questions or just cool features that you'd like to see in this game, let us know in the comments. We love reading them. So if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button for more updates on the project. I'm trying to get one of these out like every week or so, so you're going to want to stay tuned in. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.